Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the finest Dawn of War unification casts this side of East Yorkshire. And today we have got a 1 vs 1 on deadly fun archaeology. Playing on the left hand side as the Eldar, we've got He-Man, and put, not, not He-Man, sorry, H-Man. And playing on the Force of Chaos side, we have got the Happening. Happening will be opening up with triple cultist squads, a Chaos Armory, and double plasma generators. Whereas the Eldar are going to go for double Guardians, a Fleet of Foot Research, Aspect Portal, and a Plasma Generator. Smoothly transitioning over to a Reaper Aspect Stun add-on as well, just for good measure. Which makes sense, I mean, you never know which your, which build orders your Chaos Enemy is going to go for, but Cultists with Grenades, I imagine, yep, there we go. It's a fairly standard opening for them, probably going to transition into an early Tier 2 into Defilers, if... That's, that's usually the, the build order, how that goes. So, go be careful with your Guardians, because those grenade launchers are going to rip through them quite easily, but the Dark Reapers should be able to outrange the grenade launchers, at least a smidgen, and be able to kill these boys fairly quickly, he says. Whether that will happen or not, we shall definitely see. Everyone just capturing their nearest and dearest, although we do have the Eldar, which is a wonderful white colour scheme going on here. In fact, the Chaos Space Marines all seem to be going for a bit of a white theme as well. So, there we go. They might not be able to agree on, you know, what what life should be and what our girls should be in life, but they at least agree on a colour scheme. And that's that's something in the 41st millennium, has to be said. But yeah, these guys are going to go for the contested one in the middle, which usually you would see someone coming over and bashing that a little bit just to make sure that it doesn't go towards your enemy very easily. But no, they'll, they'll capture it with very little in the way of argy-bargy. Dark Reapers are going to be coming over here. Just scare away these heretics who have not been doing any dancing. So they have full health at the moment. Won't be able to take on that listing post. I mean, they will be able to, but it'll take them a little while. May as well come down to the southern side and see if they can deny any extra capping. Which, looks like they will be. And quickly murderizing the cultists. Four lads in there. There's a four, yeah, four with a Dark Reaper Exarch. We've got to be careful. Those, like we say, those grenade launchers are quite lethal. But oh, getting a squad wipe here almost. Can I get it? Oh, nearly. Good lord, that is very unfortunate. That would have been a major boon for the Eldar player. But even losing a dude in the process there. We've still got the Vexarch. He's got double bits on the end of his gun. One for you and one for me. Not quite denying that listening purse there, so... It was a good effort, all the same. Having to force the happening to rebuild his... Squad members for his cultist squad, but that's fine. He's now got all his bits, and he should be able to go into that quick tier two. And yeah, he's got money for it. Just press the button, man. Well, he's probably just thinking, ah, oh, shit. <laughs> gonna, gonna micro the things going on down here. But there we go. Going into that tier two now. So, yes. So, you gonna be very careful. If they are caught out of their tiers, if they're a little bit behind in the old tech game, they're gonna be really, really struggling against the Chaos Space Marines. Even if they don't go for Defiler straight away, if they go for some, oh, what we call them? Some Rhinos. Set the Cultists in there, throw them out, throw a couple of grenade launchers in the um, Dark Reaper's way, and then put them back in. That should mitigate a lot of the anti-infantry damage coming in from them, but we shall see. Two squads. A good chunk of grenade launcher. In fact, three squads now coming in. A very low model count on these guys at the moment. But the Eldar are going to fall back. And they have, they've got they've got the green money for Tier 2. They're going to pop down another Plasma Generator. Hmm. Interesting. You've got the money. Or you've got the green money already. You don't need more of it. You need more blue, if anything. But currently, no one has gone for... In fact, we've, we've yet to see the relic being built on for either side. Oh, no. Just finished for the Chaos Space Marines. But no one really upgrading their listing posts at this present moment in time. And Chaos Space Marines are not being aggressive because they could just sit back and relax. They're playing for the long game here. Eldar really needs to do something. We have got triple, oh sorry, double Dark Reapers and a Guardian Squad. So these guys are going to come down here and focus on this listing purse. But with it being the furthest down south, the Happenings did a really clever thing where he's upgraded that listing purse to keep it nice and safe. And yeah, he's also going to repair this one. So Eldar, you're a bit up shit's creek without a paddle, I'm afraid. You've got... Ah, there we go. The Soul Shrine there. Now Now we've also got, like, an excess of, of blue as well, sir. So. Now's the time. Oh, you cancelled the Plasma Generator. Right. Okay. Fair enough, He-Man. So, I know you're not called He-Man. You're called H-Man, but... I'm going to call you He-Man for the duration of this game, just because I, I quite like the idea of... 
He-Man on the Master of the Universe being on the side of the Eldar. Also because of that meme song that came out a while ago. You know that one? Hey, hey, what's going on? My goodness. That was a bop. That was a tune. Played that in the club. All the kids were shaking their ankles, dancing around. Here we are, the, the giant pizza of Chaos. Gonna bring oh, a Chaos Vindicator. Right, okay. That would make infinitely more sense. Because the Defiler, yeah, it's got a longer range. But the Vindicator deletes infantry. Yes, that makes sense. But God, oh, okay. Going for Howling Banshees. Well, you know what? I'm going to take all my predictions and shove them where the sun doesn't shine. Clearly, my brain is not working here today. But Howling Banshees, interesting. How are they going to affect this? They are now swapping their grenade launchers for plasma guns, so that is something. Probably anticipating those fire dragons coming out, but oh, I see, okay. Rather than going for what the Chaos Space Marine player thinks he's going to go for, if he goes for Banshees instead, that might help him. Question mark. Oh, dear. Oh, no. That's a sad time. Chaos Vindicator just... Good Lord. That words do not even describe just the, the, the sheer terror that must be on their faces right now. But I do quite like it. They've got a little, little flame bit in front of the gun. Which is quite the bop, quite the aesthetic. Of course, capturing the bits in the middle as the Dark Reapers think, nope, that, that blooming Chaos Vindicator, he can have all the critical locations he wants or needs in his life. We are just going to vibe over here instead. But no upgrades on the listening shrine still. We've got tier 2 and the enhanced optics and reinforced armor should help them stand around. Also that support portal as well. In fact, actually support portal with some vipers in there would be an excellent choice against this Chaos Vindicator. Maybe even some Wraith Lords with their bright lances maybe. But where have all the cultists gone? Cultists, where have you gone? Well, let me go onto their side. Oh! You're in the center. I couldn't see because the red down here was... I don't know. Maybe I'm just like a, the antithesis of a bull. I can't see red. But, yeah, that's going to happen over there. And the Dark Reapers are going to focus on this listing post over here. And they do outrange listing post, actually, so... Even though they will be able to take on the Vindicator quite easily, they can at least be an absolute nuisance. One Defiler now out. Also, just the color scheme for these guys, white and gold, do really, really work. Is that the original colour scheme of... Oh, blooming Death Guard before they started going green and smelly? Maybe. Or was it, or was it white and grey, white, white and black? I don't know, it was some sort of colours. I imagine they wore some colours. But yeah, once the Vindicator comes over, that's a sad time to follow as well, could provide some firing support. And Chaos, you've got lots of blue money. You could be spending more if you wanted to. What are you spending it on? That's the question. Are you just... Piling up other things. Maybe. Maybe not. We are going to see some Wraith Lords. There, look at that. I made a prediction. And my prediction was correct. Haha! -ha, I know things. And stuff. The Defile will be taking on that place. Chaos Vindicate will be taking on this listing shrine down here as well, sir. The Eldari are struggling for map control here. Losing their strategic point downstairs. Going to be capped by some cultists. But when the Wraith Lord comes out, might I say... The Dawn of War 2 models that have been imported into this game infinitely more intimidating than the hodgepodge of limbs that you see in the original Dawn of War. Well, you've got to move, Wraith Lord. You've got to... There we go. Firing away. And actually, straight at 1v1, that Chaos Vindicator hasn't quite got the armor to resist, although the Bright Lance does have to hit every now and then. We'll turn around and... Oh, dear. Like a shotgun. Taking him on. But there are a lot of them. For once in their lives, the Eldari do have the numbers advantage. But the cultists are now infiltrated, so we'll need to see some warlocks on these boys. Do you have a warlock in you? You do have a warlock in you, Guardian Squad. So you're alright. Another Wraith Lord over here. Going to be outranging this Defiler. Yeah, fair play. They've got the anti-vehicle stuff, but that's because Defilers are anti-vehicle in close combat. And while the Chaos Vindicator is also anti-vehicle, but does not like being bashed itself do have a Hell Talent flying above, high in the air. And against all of this stuff, one single Wraith Lord might struggle. Also got a faster firing rate as well. So we're taking it out. Quite expensive, do not want to lose that. But he's lost all the same. The Chaos could be putting a lot more pressure on if they just, I don't know, just 
spam down. I mean, if they got like one of those recruitment barracks, I completely forget what it's called, the Chaos Temple, and they just like spammed out a whole bunch of Chaos Space Marines, giving them all the upgrades that they could possibly want or need, just to, just to, I would want to say to further bolster their unit composition, they would certainly be in a winning position by now, but not really focusing on spending their money. And also, Chaos, uh, not Chaos, Eldar, they're doing a very similar thing. Going to go for a second webway assembly. Have you already got one, two, three, four, five, six? Ah, you've already got your maximum amount of plasma generators. So looking to get some more. So seemingly that they're going to be focusing on more vehicle-heavy based play. Interesting. Still got some blue there. Could be spending that. We're spending a lot more, boys. That's fine. Cultist being vandalized in the life department. One squad wipe there. All the dead bodies you could possibly want or need from the perspective of the Eldar. A lot of artillery being fired on over here. Oh, no. That's a sad... Sad boys do have one warlock lying dead on the ground here. And are we getting any more? Well, the rear floor's going to be repaired. Got a spare one there as well. I'm going to go for free. Okay. Second Webbery... Uh, Webbery? Webway assembly has been finished. And it looks like more plasma generators will be built up. A shroud research as well coming online for these guys. To prevent any kind of base trading situations going on. There we go, Chaos Temple. That's what you want. Because at the moment, you are drowning in blue. And you've got no infantry whatsoever. So you'll need to get some at the very least. And Chaos Cultists aren't going to be cracking it for you. With all these dark reapers knocking about. But Triple Rift Lord's now going to come down and see if they can... Sort out this hell talent. Although, dear, oh dear, not being able to cancel that listening shrine there. And thankfully, the hell talent's got the maneuverability to get out of the range of these Wraith Lords before it gets into any serious mischief. But we'll be rebuilt. Will that listening shrine? Good economies are 122 and 79 for Chaos compared to 170 for the Eldar. I haven't done an econ check for the entire game, which is quite late for me usually. But, yeah, it doesn't matter really about the economy for other players because they've both got a stonking amount of it. So that may be less... I don't know, it's, it's, it's getting better, it's getting better. Demon Pit over on the northern side. And double Hell Talons. One falling down quite quickly, wasn't repaired. So will be shot up. This one also, at least providing some vision for these guys to fire in. But against three on their own, not ideal. Are going to lose their... Listing post down here. And the Chaos, they've they've got to start doing stuff. They've got to start switching up their strategy. The Wraith Lord spam is quite the meaty treat to get your teeth around. And you're going to need something from... Ah, there we go. Havoc Marines on the way. Limiter 2, so they're going to go straight for 2. And probably going to hopefully go for some Laz Cannon. Seems like he's in his tier, tier 3 now. Tier 3 question mark. Oh, well, of course tier 3 has got Demon Pip. And obliterate squads. Okay. And there we go. Spending that money quite nicely on all those elite units that the Eldar are really going to struggle against if they don't start crumping these things. Vindicator finally been taken out. Good, good value on that Vindicator, in all fairness, but could have probably pulled it back a little bit earlier. Defiler now been taken out. Obliterate squad online, and the Wraith Lords will not be able to do all that much against these guys in a ranged stance. So, rather than being ranged stance, going to stand around and beat him up with a sword. Or well, a backhand, even. So, yeah, fair enough. But the Havocs will also come in as well. And this is time for the Wraith Lord to say goodnight, sweet prince, and go back home. Eldar capturing this strategic point on the southern side while everyone just starts to breathe and rebuild things that were lost yeah, fair enough. Are you going to go for anything more substantial? You are going to... What are you doing? Oh, you're building a webway gate. Fair enough. That makes absolute and total sense. But nothing apart from howling banshees. Interesting time to get some. It's just a plan of big sword, little sword. Stab everyone until they all die. Hell Talons are not going to be stabbed by anyone. Unless the howling banshees have got their jumping upgrade. So their plan is just to jump in the middle of everyone and start slicing and dicing. They've got their armor upgrade. They'll also be supported at ranged with these Dark Reapers. So not 
incredibly terrible. Not the worst idea. We've also got that critical location to be captured in the middle, so that should certainly help them see what's coming. As opposed to the Force of Chaos who can see nary a man over there. Vision really going to help the Eldar. If they stay there, but the Guardians are going to... Oh no, you're going to... Where are you going, Guardians? You're just going to capping duties. To be fair, there is one space over here that you can be capping. So I will forgive you for that. I will let you go. And tier 3 on the way for the Eldar. Lots of posturing. Lots of thinking about engagements. Chaos Space means do not, like we said earlier on, do not want to leave. Especially with their tech advantage. But the Eldar will soon be caught up with the tech advantage. So tricky situations all around. I <laughs> like this. Haha, <laughs> they fly over and think, no, thank you. That's too much for us. We'll do something else instead. And here come the Havoc Marines, along with the Obliterators. Now these guys, do you still have Heavy Bolters on yet? Yes, you do. So you should be able to do an alright job against these Dark Reapers. Should you really wish. They are in Heavy Cover. And the Wraith Lords over here, scaring away these Hell Talons. Not building up anything else there. But it could be, if they wanted to. Forcing the Eldar away from the centre here. Got those Howling Banshees... They're shiny sticks. But nothing nothing else going on. Now we're going to go for Annihilate the Enemy. Ah, you're just going up some straight up to tier 4. Everyone just chilling out at the moment with the Hell Talons now. Potentially going to be sneaking around. Seeing what they can see. On the northern side, there are the Guardian Squad. Will now be shot at from a great height. The dustbins of Chaos been thrown down upon their heads. And they will be forced to run away before they get involved in anything. A fifth Wraith Lord now out. And the Hell Talons are not going to do anything at all against such a volley of fire. And the Howling Banshees, they're out and about. Ready to jump. Oh, they've got the upgrade. No, they do not. But they do have a Scream upgrade. So just going to shout obscenities at these guys. Oh, you, you buggers. Go away. Go home. I've got a little speed up thing, though. That's fine. So I've got that. The Oblivion is massively out of position here, but... Thankfully, the Howling Benches are nowhere near them. Listing post attempting to fire down upon the Howling Benches as they go about their business. We do have a Land Raider Hades Diabolus coming out. But man, those Howling Benches, still full models. I mean, in fact, no, never mind. They've got one model that was taken out, but quite impressive. You don't normally see Howling Benches just walk in somewhere and basically win an engagement. The Havocs, not really able to put out that DPS like they wanted to. Wraith Lords surrounded by angry women and angry men. And at this point, yeah, you just put all your boys into close combat stance and force these guys to be constantly on the move. But there is nowhere to go. I'm going to go for a Mutilator Squad, which will be amazing in close combat. Whether they'll be able to stand up against the Howling Banshees with all their upgrades, not entirely sure. Land Raider is now out. And he should be all right against killing the Howling Banshees at the very least. Now also got those Mutilators on the back lines as well. So it's not looking too brilliant for Chaos at the moment, but he's also going to go for some Corn Berserkers as well. So transitioning away into a melee composition here. Just to provide some assistance to those Havoc Marines, which is exactly what the Doctor ordered. Pardon me, clearly the excitement was too much. My lungs couldn't hold on to it. But Diablos really doing a good job here, at least occupying the attention of a couple of these Wraith Lords. While things are going to go on over on the distance, some infiltrated Chaos Cultists as well, providing some plasma gun fire as well with no Eldar detection knocking about. But the Howling Banshees, they are still there. Still numerous. Still quite deadly. But with a Land Raider knocking around. They are going to run away. Guardians over here finishing their capping duties but will continue to flee away as the Corn Berserkers also adding to the melee front lines. Even the Wraith Lord doesn't want to contend with these angry beasts. Howling Badges, where are you going? You're going somewhere but that's not where you're meant to go. There we go. But then again, do you want to be in close combat with Mutilators? their saws for hands. 
Well, never saw it coming. Haha. We're gonna go for it anyway. And oh, an avatar of Kane. Well, that's one way to change the tide of battle. Whether we could do something useful or not, we'll have to see. Gonna go straight for that land raid, although I don't know if the land raider is the main problem. Oh, well, but a Wraith Knight. Ah, double relic units, yes. There we go. Him to stride forward. Mutilators don't want to leave these guys on their own, so they will turn away from these Wraith Lords. And madness and chaos. What a wonderful, tasty looking model going on over there. As he brings in the, the big ninja strike, turning him into Shish Kebab. Shawshank Redemption, Chicago, as some would say. And the Mutilators are no longer, they have been deleted. Now, time to kill that Land Raider. And what is Chaos going to do against the two big daddies walking down the middle? They've gone for more Obliterators. They've gone for more Havocs. Well, not more Havocs, but they've gone for the same amount. Cast Lord on the way, and a Demon Prince summoning. Will a Demon Prince be able to turn the tides of this? The Wraith Knight is quite low on health. Well, he's quite low on armor, should I say. So, Concentrated Fire should be able to take him down. But the Avatar of Kane has got demon armor, can resist some of that incoming damage. But will the Demon Prince mince his meat? That's the question. Havoc Squad being more or less killed straight away. Howling Banshee is coming in for a little bit of revenge. One dude being given the good old Avatar squeeze. The Chaos Lord ready to meet the metal. Now, from what I understand, when he changes into a Demon Prince, he gets it all his full health back. So maybe the idea is to send him in. Do as much damage as he can until he's about to die and then change him into a Demon Prince. I think that's what's going on here. So we'll see an epic duel. 1v1. The Curse Lord isn't doing a terrible job, but now he's going to transition. Showing him his might. He's a short king. But he's going to give it a go all the same. Fire Prism's been fired at him and oh dear, no, that's, uh, that's less than ideal. Giving him a smack on the backside. Does seem that He Man is giving the Demon Prince an attempt at an honourable 1v1, but then there's mutilators come in. All bets are off. There's no friendship, no kinship in this war. Only death, only destruction. And the Avatar King, probably winning the first 1v1 of his life, stands victorious over the corpses of the demons. The Matt Damons, if you will. And that is, I do believe, all she wrote. We are going to see one Isakanda Kai on. Oh, no, never mind. He's going to be kept indoors for now. And would you look at that? Quite an exciting match. It went from zero to 100 really, really quickly. Look like that. The melee push from the Chaos Forces were going to smite the Eldar. But then Avatar happened. And then this dude happened. And what a wonderful model he is. Like, now that I've got into the habit of putting the graphics up and remembering to do it. It's just smooth. Smooth and crisp. I love it. So yeah, cool. Thank you for sending this game in uh, to the Discord. If you want to support the channel, have a look at the old Patreon. One pound a month gets you one extra game a week. And there's also a Discord, like I mentioned earlier on, uh, where Discord things happen. I'm Mr. Landshark. Pleasure as always, never chop. Now, see you in a bit. Peace.